Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video is on uh, strategic positioning uh, and it's really just introducing this section 3.8.2, looking at a couple of key definitions and uh, setting up for the next few videos which will look at uh, Porter's uh, different strategies here. So um, the first thing we need to be aware of really is that this whole um, part 3.8 choosing strategic direction is really about um, competitive advantage. Um, Organisations when they choose their strategic direction will be trying to gain some sort of competitive advantage over their uh, customers. So it's really important we understand what we mean when we say competitive advantage. So uh, I would interpret competitive advantage as the unique characteristics of an organisation that differentiate them from their competitors and help them to generate revenues. So competitive advantage is a, is a source of sales effectively for the business. It's what makes customers want to go out and buy an organisation's products. So what can sources of competitive advantage be? Well, it might be that they've got a really strong brand image company like Apple, for example. It might be the workforce has got unique skills and attributes and talents that uh, uh, competitors can't copy easily. Um, it might simply be that the organisation ha has um, managed to benefit from economies of scale, lower average costs and, then ca and can therefore either sell their products at a low price or um, uh, generate profits, large profits off its um, uh, sales. Um, it might be that the design of the products is really good, really strong and makes people want to buy them. It might simply be that the um, organisation has a competitive advantage because it's in a geographical location where there's no competitors. Um, maybe it's a petrol station on the middle of a, um, a road that's um, relatively uninhabited and, and have got few petrol stations around. You know, people need to fill up with petrol there. Their competitive advantage is the fact that they're uh, well positioned geographically. Um, you know, other examples of geographical competitive advantage might be tourism. You know, maybe you're near, um, uh, you know, um, an area of outstanding natural beauty or something like that. Um, Customer service can be a source of competitive advantage. The competitive advantage can really be anything that the organisation can do that gives it an advantage over uh, the other people in their market, the other companies in their market, and make customers want to come and buy a product. So, um, the other key phrase that you need to be aware of is strategic positioning. Okay, so um, so what is strategic positioning? Well, strategic positioning, the, the name implies that we, we are taking a strategic approach. In other words, this isn't like by accident. We're not like falling into um, something by mistake. We're taking a very deliberate choice. We're setting a plan to position ourselves within a market. So we can define it as the process of choosing uh, the methods an organisation will use to differentiate themselves within the markets in which they compete. So, you know, what's going to be our unique selling point? Where are we going to put ourselves in this market? Um, we could um, put, position ourselves as a low price provider, right? As long as our products aren't um, uh, are of a reasonable quality, we could set ourselves up as a low price provider and that becomes our strategic position within the market. We're, we're cheaper than everybody else, um, our products are pretty good, they're not too bad at all and uh, people are happy to come and shop with us. Or it might be that we've got a high level of perceived benefit. In other words, um, consumers uh, value something about the product. Maybe it does something unique that uh, the competitive products don't do. So I'm going to make a couple of videos on Porter's generic strategies um, over the next uh, couple of videos. But uh, I just want to introduce this model. So this is Michael Porter again, who we saw with the five forces. Um, this is a uh, marketing strategy, um, a guide for Porter's marketing strategies. And he did research and he suggested that um, 
there are really four methods by which an organization can compete uh, within their market and, and for their marketing strategy. So we've got two axes here. We've got the market, in other words, the customers, is the organization focusing on the mass market, uh, making a lot of sales, or is it a uh, niche market, a relatively small market, a sub-market within the mass market of consumers with uh, a similar choice, uh, similar characteristics, sorry. Um, then uh, on this axis we've got the source of competitive advantage and basically Michael Porter said uh, there are two sources of competitive advantage. You can either be a low cost uh, provider and that can uh, be effective as long as your quality is is reasonable and people are happy to uh, uh, think that the low cost reflects reasonable value for money uh, or a differentiation strategy where you differentiate yourself from the rest of the market okay so let's just have a look at uh, some examples within these categories so the cost leadership we're aiming at the mass market but we are generally benefiting from economies of scale and are able to sell good quality products at reasonable prices um, and uh, we're aiming at the mass market. So these are large companies, Audi, Primark, Toyota, that's the Toyota Yaris there. I'm not saying they're all Toyotas, are uh, uh, low cost and aimed at the mass market. Um, but, uh, excuse me. Uh, but that's the cost leadership strategy. We're, we're, we're selling low cost products, we're gaining economies of scale, we're a big company, we're aiming at the mass market. On the other hand, the opposite strategy to that is a niche market uh, with a highly differentiated and usually high cost product. So a typical example of focus differentiation would be a tailor making handmade suits for you know, a small number of customers who are willing to pay a high price for a really high quality product. David Lloyd gyms are another example. They're quite high priced gyms. They're not focusing at the whole market. They're focusing at a premium end customer who's willing to pay a higher price. Or Bugatti, Bu they don't sell many Bugattis at all, um, but it's a strategy of focused differentiation where they're focusing on a very small subsection of the market, uh, selling them really high quality, high price product. So they're kind of, um, the two, you know, if you're selling low price mass market, if you're selling a differentiated product, it's a small niche market. They tend to be the strategies that we think of. Um, but let's go back to and have a look at a cost focus. So a cost focus strategy means we're selling a low price product, but we're picking a relatively small market niche. Um, so examples of this might be uh, Poundland. Um, they're aiming at a very particular market niche. Uh, but they sell at a very, very low cost. Skoda are an example of a company, you know, very high quality cars, but they're, they're not exactly mass market cars yet. That might change, but um, they're good quality cars, but they're focused on a relatively small subsection of the market. And, um, you know, Bargain Booze are a small chain of uh, news agents, I think. You know, they they sell things very cheaply, but... They are focused on a very small geographical market around where they um, set up. So the final one is differentiation leadership, which can be a very hard strategy to follow because you're trying to um, sell a, um, a product which is differentiated to the mass market. Um, Apple, Nike and BMW are examples of companies that have done this really well. They, they're highly differentiated product companies. We, we all recognize the brands. Um, but they are essentially mass market brands. Um, so in the next couple of videos we'll have a look at those uh, strategies in a bit more detail.